Step by step, I obey. I am always in line. I am a leader, a follower, a soldier. And although I may be tempted to step outside, to deviate from what I am accustomed to, I am reminded of my duty. This is a privilege to be a part of something so great, so recognized. By being a soldier, I help so many people, like my country, my family, and of course myself. But then I stop to think if that's really true. Am I really helping others by putting myself in harm's way? Does my life or death really make a difference? To know that I may be just another ant marching forward, defending a hole that my country has made for itself. I live in a constant state of pause and play here. If I am not fighting, I'm just up waiting. Wondering if my dad will ever be sober enough to salute me when he sees me again. Wondering if this war will follow me home. Wondering if I will ever make it home. Sometimes, when I am alone in my thoughts, I close my eyes and reminisce about being in the park with my wife and baby boy. I am on the green grass, the trees protecting us from the sunlight. The bee is working all around us. But then something distracts me and brings me back to this moment of partedness. But the grass has now turned to sand. My family has become my platoon. The trees are tanks and bees are bullets swarming around me looking for something to sting. I am just scared, I think. Worried. But I can never show it. No, I need to be strong for my family and for my country. I have a duty to serve, and if I start thinking about serving myself, I will certainly trip and fall as I continue forward. If I trip, I will affect everyone that marches before me, beside me, and behind me. If I trip, I will surely get out of line, and I cannot risk that. I can never get out of line. I must always obey. Always. Alright! It was stupid of me to put a breathe rate strip on our dog's nose. I'll admit that. <laughs> but maybe if you told me a year ago that Boston Terriers have bad snoring habits, then we probably wouldn't be having this discussion right now. <laughs> Look, I get it. You're mad that I thought this was rational. But whatever, it's not that big of a deal, okay? She licked the strip off her nose and swallowed it. <laughs> Dogs eat weird things all the time. Maggie's poodle ate an entire box of tampons and she was fine. <laughs> but this is not about what our dog ate. This is about what our dog snoring is doing to me. Sure, when we first adopted this eight-year-old morbidly obese, sheltered creature, it was cute. We joked that her snoring sounded like your grandfather's and that she really could use a little doggy sleep apnea machine. But babe, night after night of having to listen to this snorkestra of hers, it's beginning to affect my existence. And yeah, I combined snoring and orchestra together. And you wanna know why? Because I can't think straight, that's why. <laughs> you want to know something? Now that I'm thinking about this, I don't even know why we're having this discussion. This is not your problem. You do not have to worry about this. It's mine to solve. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep this between me and Chewbacca here. And we're going to solve this problem ourselves. We're going to get professional help. And we're never going to have to have this conversation again. And I promise you one thing, when I get home from the vet, both her and I will be sleeping peacefully tonight. <laughs> something I do to ease the butterflies when I'm talking to strangers. So, let's be friends. My name is Alex, and 
I'm obviously not responsible for this outfit. <laughs> being blind has its ups and downs, this being one of them. But my wife's poor fashion sense is the least of my problems. See, I haven't been blind my entire life. No, I have had the luxury of seeing a sunrise in the morning, or a snowflake on the tip of my nose, or a joyful teardrop fall from the face of someone who loves me. I lost my eyesight 10 years ago in a car accident that was instigated by my stubbornness to drive home drunk. Luckily, no one was hurt but me. I was a cocky, rebellious, 22-year-old know-it-all, college scholarship, serious girlfriend, and a future so bright it was blinding. Looking back, it's nothing but a tragic hero in the making. More like a tragic zero, if you ask me. My flaw being my mistrust for anyone's opinion but my own. And as you can see, I decided to take a turn for the worse. Now, I have to depend on others for my safety. And that's scary. Actually, that's really scary. And what's more terrifying is being a blind man living in Manhattan. But most people can't even make it around this city with a map let alone without their eyesight. But well, little faith, anything is possible, right? And that is why I'm here to talk to you today about the importance of having faith. Now, before you see things the wrong way, I'm not talking about the type of faith that you find in your amphitheater venues or churches or mosques or synagogues or what have you. It's the faith that you find in the people that surround you. One that doesn't require a denomination, but rather a dialogue with your friends or family members or even an everyday stranger. So why do we need faith, you ask? Simple. Because we all need a little help somewhere along the lines. We all need a little support or a little guidance to help us get through or get past one thing or another. We all contribute to the puzzle, even if we carry different pieces. Some pieces may seem a lot more important than others, but nevertheless, they all contribute to the bigger picture. <sighs> Look, I lost everything in my life that I ever worked for, and believe me, dying seemed like the next best option. But somehow, I realized that losing my eyesight has allowed me to see things a different way. Look, life can suck. Life can suck real bad, but I'm not gonna stand here and tell you how hard it's been for me. I don't need your sympathy. I do more without my eyes than most of you do with them. I read, I take the subway, I go to movies, I go to shows, I play sports, I work out. Actually, I used to work out. <laughs> I live in the city that never sleeps. A city that still shows life, even when darkness falls upon it. I like that. I can relate to that. And I think that's why we all need to learn to relate to each other a lot more. Sure, it's true, we come into this world alone. We are buried the same way. But what we do in the middle of those two extremes is far from solitary. Don't wait to lose something in order to appreciate its value. Cherish it now. You never know what you have until it's gone for good. All right, seriously, you can turn these lights back on now. <laughs> Tracy, I know you're upset that I just kissed you, but, but think about it. <laughs> think about it, seriously. It's not like we haven't done this before. Uh, our lips touch every time you use my chapstick. <laughs> and since we've been working together, you must have used my chapstick at least a hundred times, which can translate into uh, almost a hundred kisses between you and moi, right? 
<laughs> Besides, you know, we both know. Everybody knows. You just don't let anyone <laughs> use your chapstick. <laughs> That's a pretty intimate thing, if you ask me. Oh, so wait, <laughs> let me ask you this: Is it cool if I tell everyone that we're kind of seeing each other? Because wait, you have a boyfriend? Well, that sucks. You know what? Fine. Here, just take this as a reminder of what you could have had. <laughs> oh, uh, and since we're being honest here, I think I may be getting a cold sore, so <laughs> you can thank karma for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Now, just listen, okay? I had a perfectly good reason why I did this. This customer was berating me about giving her more caramel on top of her 800 calorie venti frappuccino. So I did. But she not only complained it wasn't good enough, she told me that I needed to buy the book Frappuccino Making for Dummies, which doesn't exist, by the way. <laughs> so I got pissed, and I poured the whole bottle of caramel on top of her jerk. Long story short, I told my boss he could fire me, and if he didn't approve of me collecting my unemployment, I would make sure to notify the district manager of how he gave our female co-workers a raise in exchange for faceless pictures of them in their underwear. A raise for a raise, if you will. <laughs> All right, I know this doesn't sound like me. That's exactly why I did it. I haven't been myself, not for a while. I just realized that uh, I'm tired of being tired all the time. Not just sleepy tired, but tired of all of this. My life, our life, always panicked, you know, always on the go, always unfulfilled. I feel like there's something more that I should be doing all the time. I am tired of looking at your face and seeing your disappointment. I have this image of you constantly looking at your watch, wondering when it's gonna be time to start looking towards the future. The future of us, kids, a bank account with more than three numbers in it. Or even a simple week's vacation. But I can't provide that for you, you know, even if I try. And why? Because I'm an actor. A guy with a part-time job that's done random shit his entire life to make cash and get by. But in reality, I was never getting by or going anywhere. You were the only person who was going places. I mean, I must be a really damn good actor if I can convince you to pick up and leave on a whim and come up here and support me in my career. A career I don't get paid to do. The only thing I've gotten paid to do since I've been here is making mocha frappuccinos. What well, got paid to do? How can I start to begin to be anything if I can't be honest with myself? I need to be a husband. I need to be a provider. I need to start realistically looking where I'm heading. Because right now I'm heading towards a dead end. We are heading towards a dead end. I, it's time to stop dreaming and actually start doing. I don't want to pretend anymore. I don't want to pretend that everything is fine and that I'm happy with the way that we live. Telling my parents everything is fine. Lying about the roles I've done and the people I know. Avoiding your parents and fear that they're going to ask me how everything is going with my career. My life has become as imaginary as my dreams. And I feel like our relationship is becoming just as imaginary. So tonight, I decided to take the first step to bring myself closer to you and back to us. So with that said, I can't believe I'm doing this right now. I don't think 
I could be an actor anymore. I don't think I want to be an actor anymore. <laughs> and I, I, I know this may sound like a suicide mission statement, but you know what? Maybe one life has to end for another to begin. This life has to end for ours to begin. I need to stop acting you know, a different way. I need to cast myself in a different role, one that you can depend on, one that I can depend on. For better, not for worse anymore. We deserve that. since childhood. For some reason, I would just get random boners all the time. When I was getting breastfed, boner. Receiving communion, boner. Or singing the national anthem in my uniform at my homecoming football game. People still refer to me as the Star Spangled Boner Guy. So, despite how hard I had it back then. <laughs> Let's talk about now, okay? You and me and the two options you have here. One, you can continue to stare at it, which I don't blame you, or, or two, or two. You can, no. <laughs> signs of caring. I'm stuck dealing with feelings that leave my smiling face barren. I'm less the lover because of this and more the fighter. A sad story man to say that I'm the co-writer. What happened to we? Forget you, all the woes with me. This kiss meant for bliss is now for goodbyes because see, you're gone. Like the wind, up and gone, like the wind. And overcast on our sunny passing, man, it's a sin because you're gone. Like the wind, up and gone, like the wind. You ran a race you never wanted to begin. Till death do us part, means nothing when you're torn from the start. Your haste made waste, throwing me out like I was a dart. Our table for two, now for one. Sad fact, but true. The reality check served to me by an affair from you. Look, love ain't a game, yo. Can't you see? This ain't tic-tac-toe. Just because you're my ex doesn't mean that I gotta owe. So much for family. Picture frames left only with me. A thousand words now unheard because you had to be gone like the wind. Up and gone like the wind. And overcast on our sunny pass and man it's a sin because you're gone like the wind. Up and gone. 
like the wind. You ran a race you never wanted to begin. I'm emotionally broke and deserve a big refund from all the wishing wells begging for better days to come. But I ain't your dog no more, so stop acting like my flea. Enjoy sucking the life out of someone else because, baby, I'm gone like the wind. Up and gone like the wind. This overcast has now passed and my life is ready to begin. Because I'm gone like the wind. Up and gone like the wind. I finished that race you never wanted to begin. So be gone like the wind. Be gone like the wind. Because I moved on like the wind. decision. I'm just trying to think what I need to do to feel more grown up. I'm a married man and I still feel like a kid. I'm 25 years old and for some reason I'm still having a hard time leaving the shield of your protection. I treat you like a GPS whenever I'm lost and need to be put back onto the right track. Or track that you think is right for me. The reality is the more I use you, the more lost I get. Do I even know any better? You've been my coach, my dugout dad for most of my life. You've always been there right alongside me, guiding me with your direction every step of the way. But being a coach, you should know that there comes a time when the roster changes. And the player needs to learn how to move forward, and the coach needs to learn how to move on. Because I try to move forward with my life, I seem to be looking back too much. 
looking for you to give me the signals before I swing instead of just going for it and seeing what happens. But this reflex is starting to feel like a reflex. And if I don't do something about it soon, there will be a lot more damage to come. And I know this because I finally had a wake-up call the other day in the form of a dream. In my dream, I was getting ready for work as usual. As I was putting on my clothes in the mirror, I noticed something strange, something odd about myself. And this something was my umbilical cord, which for some reason was still attached to me. So after I woke up all freaked out from this crazy ass dream, I realized that this was a sign. The umbilical cord was a symbol for how I'm still dependent on a greater source for my growth and development. And that greater source, it's you, Dad. I want to grow and develop on my own now. And in order for that to happen, I'm going to need you to cut the cord. Just cut it! So that I can sustain my own life. So that I can live like the adult that I am now. Look, I'll always be your little boy, no matter how old I get. And I'm so thankful for all the memories you've given me. Like my first Little League game, when I put my cup on wrong, all the parents in the crowd pointed it out. <laughs> Rumor has it you told them it was just good genetics. <laughs> I do have good genetics. I'm the product of a single father who made efforts instead of excuses. And I can't even begin to thank you for all you've done and all you continue to do. I need you to go from my dugout to the bleachers. Because I'm trying to start my own team now, Dad. And it's not going to be easy for either of us. But right now, it's the right thing. And look, the day I decide to add my own little players to the roster, I'll make sure you have the best seats in the house. Yep, right next to my in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Dad. Matches. All it would have taken was a pair of friggin' matches. See, I was at this house party in Manhattan, standing in line with two other women waiting to use the bathroom. The one in front of me looked like the spawn of Kesha and Mel Gibson's character from the movie A Man Without a Face. While the one behind me reminded me of an actress that I saw on a website called MILFandCookies.com. <laughs> Being I had nothing to lose but my morals, I decided to talk to her. Look, the actress, not Frankenstein face in front of me. I started talking about how lame the party was, and how I'm a stand-up comic. I even mentioned the title of a book I never read just to sound smarter. And, to top it all off, I even told her that I was still talking to my childhood pen pal in Mongolia. Boy, did she eat it all up. Every word. Kind of like she did with those shortbread cookies on that website. <laughs> Minus the gangbang, of course, right? <laughs> but all that doesn't matter now anyways. And why is that? Because I didn't have any matches. See, if I hadn't suddenly decided to quit smoking on a drunken promise to my mom on Mother's Day, then I would have been able to cover up that smell when it was my turn to use the bathroom. A smell that was left by the chick that was ahead of me in line. The same chick whose face looked like Cujo trying to scratch his nose with his teeth. <laughs> Guys, this smell was so bad, it would have made two girls in one cup look like a Saturday morning cartoon show. A smell so bad that if it suddenly became human and looked itself in the mirror, it would have killed itself. A smell that eventually ruined my chances with my suspected porn goddess that stood behind me waiting for her turn in line to use that gas chamber of a bathroom. But before I could say anything to Warner about the smell that wasn't mine, she had already entered the bathroom. And as soon as that door closed, so did the one that would have led me to her cookies. <laughs> and that's the last I saw of her. 
Well, that's not true. I actually saw her last week on that website again, but face to face, that is the last time. And I will tell you this, I will never go to a party, or even out in public for that matter, without some matches in my pocket. Without some matches in my pocket. <laughs> A toast to my sister Caitlin and her newly wedded husband, Stephen. <laughs> wow, here we are, the wedding day. The two families becoming one. Yeah. Well, on behalf of the special occasion, I would like to say a few words with regard to the bride and groom. <laughs> 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 I've shared many <laughs> proud moments standing next to my sister Caitlin. I knew we were kids. I was actually standing right next to her when she said her first word. Ouch. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry about that, Caitlin. <laughs> but you shouldn't have tried to take my lollipop. <laughs> I was also standing right next to her in our parents' living room when she decided to turn down two Ivy League schools, Yale and Princeton, only to later enroll in Phoenix Online. <laughs> <laughs> or Phoenix U, or University of whatever it is. Regardless of everyone's disappointment, I remain proud of my sister for making tough choices and staying true to herself. And it was because of those choices that fate would happen to guide Steve to her doorstep. Yeah. Or on my parents' doorstep, actually, because see, Steve and I went to Yale together. Yeah, a real university with buildings and dorm rooms and things. Yeah, Steve and I were best friends ever since we were freshmen rushing at the same frat. And then later in senior year, Steve decided to move out of the house after he became the victim of a hazing incident. <laughs> Sorry about that, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not everyone finds dildo spanking funny. <laughs> so after graduation, Steve contacted me out of the blue to tell me about this job offer he was considering in my hometown in Pennsylvania. Now, I hadn't seen Steve in months following the incident, but he was still my brother, you know? So I say, hey, stay at my parents' place for two days instead of getting a hotel. And it was then that Steve happened to run into my darling sister, Caitlin, who was also busy going to school in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it was then that Steve started tutoring my baby sister. <laughs> now, despite having graduated with a degree in biochemical engineering, Steve decided not to take the job in Pennsylvania, or any other job for that matter, knew what Steve decided to do was move to New York to become an actor, while my sister <laughs> well, my sister stayed in Pennsylvania so she can finish her online education. <laughs> Figure that one out. <laughs> I, being the only one that didn't waste our parents' money, took a degree relevant job in Boston, and, oh well, Steve and I pretty much lost touch. I mean, he was so busy trying to advance his career, the only thing he had time for was maintaining a long-distance poke with my sister. <laughs> I mean, how could he possibly find the time to make room for his best friend? The guy that basically introduced him to his future wife. I mean, look at it from my perspective. Your best friend, who you used to do everything with, suddenly pulls the plug on you only so he can go out and plug your sister? <laughs> and, and why, Caitlin? Why? Why'd you have to go and ruin the only real friendship I had? And now you're marrying him? How fair is that? I mean, yeah, sure, maybe I was a dick to you growing up, but this, <laughs> this is forever. <laughs> I mean, you have now forged a bond of dickness. <laughs> <Ever>. <laughs> 
before the eyes of God. That's just messed up. <laughs> Way worse than when I used to teach you for action your nipples in high school. <laughs> Steve, seriously, dude, her tits used to have eyebrows, man. <laughs> don't act like you don't already know. And just for the record, ladies and gentlemen, we live in a small house with one bathroom. You accidentally see things. Things that later cause you to seek counseling. <laughs> Speaking of counseling, why are these two even together? What? I mean, let's dig a little deeper into this, shall we? Maybe, maybe Caitlin's pregnant. Which I hope to God isn't true, because man, I would feel sorry for that thing. <laughs> that kid would be born with more hair around his nipples than Tom Selleck has on his lip. <laughs> but that isn't what I think, no. What I think, I think that Steve here needs my sister's salary to support his imaginary career. I mean, Steve, come on, man. Just because you were an extra once on Gossip Girl does not give you the right to call yourself a professional actor. You have a wife now. Just accept that. Accept the fact that a dream is no longer something you have the luxury of having. Except the fact that one day you're going to wake up and realize that you have to save up every damn dime you have just so that your future nappy nippled hair children can <laughs> one day go to your kitchen and get an online education just like their mother. <laughs> Tooth hearts doesn't it, Caitlin? Didn't Mom tell you to stop taking my shit? Mark? What? Steve! Hey! Buddy! What are you Everything all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Just having a little pep talk with my friend Jack here before I go out and give him a big toast. <laughs> <laughs> look, Mark, are you sure you're still okay to do that? Because if not, I mean, bro, I look, I'm absolutely magnificent. You are absolutely drunk. Magnificent, drunk, same thing. <laughs> Definitely not the same thing. Mm. Look, look. Let me just finish up my uh, little conversation here, and uh, I'll be out there in a minute. All right. All right, just don't be much longer. You got it, bro. Hey, look. You, you, you're the best, man. <laughs> no, you are. I know, I know, 
know, but mom, I already bought the tickets to come down. But well, if I wanted to save myself the trip, I would have just broken up with Sarah over the phone, okay? Look, I got this covered. I know, I know you were just trying to help, Mom, but what I really need is for you and your car to pick me up at the station, so can you still do that? Great. Call you when I'm leaving the city. And Mom, um, could you please not wear your moo-moo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> You mind if I sit? Uh, uh, no. Go ahead, let me just grab no, this no, no. Up. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> how, how you girls do it. <laughs> it's like you're packing for Armageddon or something. <laughs> <laughs> Carry this all by yourself. Well, I guess looks can be deceiving. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, well, I guess so. <laughs> and you better be careful, you could uh, <clears throat> catch scoliosis or something. Thanks, I'll keep a lookout for it. <clears throat> so I see you're not a fan of the coffee. Actually, I've never been here before. <laughs> it sucks, it tastes like warm dirt water. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Both about the coffee and the fact you know what warm dirt water tastes like. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you just ask for another cup? I could, but it'll still taste bad. Then why would you continue to buy it? As a distraction. A distraction? Yeah, they just added this new buyer goodbye policy to the store. Really? It's called buyer goodbye? I like it. The name that is not the policy. You see, if you don't buy something, they can now uh, ask you to leave or loiter or some shit. Wow, I didn't know that. So in order to bend and not break the rules, I usually buy a cup, use that as a glorified paperwork. Sounds like a good idea, but you're wasting money all for the sake of a seat, aren't you? <laughs> not if you're giving someone else's neighbor numbers. Neighbor numbers? It's the ID badge for the employees at the store. They get uh, free coffee and discounts on the products. So you never had to pay for coffee here? Never. Speaking of which, how's your overpriced meal? Oh, it's okay. I just lost my appetite. And eight dollars. <laughs> Two, I guess. Would you like the rest of it? Oh, no, thank you. Sure? Positive. Bread makes me gassy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to hear that. <laughs> <sighs> So do you work or live around here? Um, yes and no. I work around here, but I live uptown near Columbia. Oh, in Morningside Heights. Yep. Hey, I got a buddy who just moved up over there. But it's a pretty nice area. Eh, it's okay. I mean, if you fancy drunk college kids, then sure, it's the best. So I guess I'm living in the wrong area then. <laughs> <laughs> what area would that be? Uh, I live in uh, Hoboken, across the Hudson, in the good old Dirty Jerks. The Dirty Jerks? Yeah. Home of Frank Sinatra. What a great area. That's why I'm there. But do the residents really call it the dirty jurors? <laughs> well, I can't speak for everyone, but I'm pretty sure that they don't. I figure that. Do you also work there? No, I, uh, I work a few blocks up from here. I'm a manager at the vitamin shop. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> do you enjoy working there? Pays the bills. Plus, I get discounts on the supplements to help maintain my fitness. <laughs> Very interesting. I never would have guessed you were taking anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Just to got the expired ones or something. Uh, <laughs> I guess looks can be deceiving, so. I guess. But don't you buy your business suit? I would assume that you don't work at a vitamin shop. And you would be correct. And may I ask what you do for the money? You may. I work for the government. Well, it sounds top secret. What do you do for the government? Well, if I tell you, will you promise not to judge me? Well, it depends on what you say. Well, never mind then. Oh, okay, fine. No judgment. <clears throat> promise? Promise. Okay. I work as a compensation analyst. Okay, so what's so bad about that? For the American International Group. Wait, you... You work for AIG? Yep. Oh. <laughs> hey, you promised. <laughs> I promised not to judge. I didn't promise not to laugh. <laughs> Whatever, I got it point after the whole fiasco went down. Uh, yeah, that's what they all say. I'm serious. Okay, fine. I believe. So besides the paid vacations, what else do you do for them? Very funny. Anyway, as a compensation analyst, I make sure that all of AIG's claims are justified so the government can monitor their activity and help restructure their business model. Wow. Straight out of the company manual. <laughs> <laughs> In layman's terms, I'm like a mechanic, but for really wealthy people's money. It sounds exhausting. It can be. A lot of zeros to worry about, and it can make you sick when you realize how much money you don't have compared to these people. Yep. But it's just something I have to deal with, no matter how much it frustrates me. And in the end, it's just your job, not your life. Yep. Your money's great and everything, but if it's at the cost of your sanity, forget about it. Yeah, but a little pain in your life is good for you, right? <laughs> Sounds like something the Dominatrix would say. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Why does Dominatrix say that? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> just... Are you trying to tell me something? No! God, no! <laughs> I was just trying to make conversation. Oh, that's how you make conversation. Look, I don't know what you're trying to say, but I've never been with a dominatrix, nor would I know where to find one, so... <laughs> Relax, I'm only teasing. That's how you tease? <laughs> hey, I can give it out just as good as I can take it. Hey, now that's something a dominatrix would say. <laughs> 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 Who cares, and even if you did, I don't see the problem in that. I'm starting to feel like a math teacher with all the problems in my life. You gonna see any more. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I think we might be trying to climb out of the same hole. Is that so? Yep. You, me, and everyone else in this city. Well, I gotta warn you. I was pretty deep. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Was that, was that a Michael Scott quote I just heard? You did. Oh my god. I have never heard a girl, I'm sorry, a woman use that line before. Oh god. My fiance used to quote the office all the time, especially that line. Uh, you know, I couldn't think if it was only that line, I'm sorry. Oh, don't be, don't be. It's a good show. Uh, the quote, not so much anymore. I know, it's been used and abused far too many times before. That's what she said. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I thought she would say that. I mean, maybe if she was a dominatrix, she wouldn't be afraid to say that? Wow, when in doubt, just bring back the dominatrix reference, huh? It works every time. That's what he said. Okay, I'm done now. Get to here. So, fiance, huh? Yeah, I hope to use that word in a sentence someday. Oh, you will, I'm sure. So, do you guys have a set date, or are you still planning? Uh, well, we do, did, but things, um, plans just kind of changed recently. He didn't change his mind, did he? If he did, I can totally see why. Uh, oh God, I, 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 I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean that, I was just playing. Really? No, 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 you're fine. It's just, I just need to, please don't apologize. I'm sure you'll be, uh, I'm sure everything will work out. 
Yeah. And you'll be married to him in no time. Well, that's the thing I can't marry him now. What is that? My fiance, he died in a car accident a little over five months ago. My phone was in my locker at the gym. I was planning on going home after my regular routine, but I took a yoga class after just so I could relieve a little added stress from that day. It wasn't until I got changed and saw my phone that I discovered what happened. 21 missed calls and voicemails. From what his mother said, he was in critical condition following the car accident and was pronounced dead shortly after the ambulance took him out. I am so sorry. Me too. What's worse than that is that we had a fight that same morning about flower arrangements. Knowing him, he probably took off work midday to come all the way down here and resolve the issue with me face to face. It's just something he would do. That's just who he was. He was considerate and committed to me always. Even when I was doubtful about taking this job up here a year ago, and over the course of that year, we'd rotate seeing each other on the weekends. Some months less often than others. And trust me, there have been many times when I felt like making the trip my last one. Was it? Just the whole distance thing. Every day trying to make a life with someone who isn't there. Waking up to no one. The emptiness that you feel despite the fact that you're with someone. I mean, sure, we had fights about stupid shit like that morning, but I think most of the fights were motivated by the fact that I was upset about how far apart we were from each other, physically and emotionally. My heart wasn't growing fonder, and I was starting to feel like things weren't perfect anymore. But what I realized now is that there is no such thing as perfect. It's an illusion. It's a cop-out. I was looking so far ahead that I wasn't even seeing what was right in front of me, what I already had. I had him. I had a guy who would come all the way up here on a whim and make me feel like it was the first time we met. To think I bought a ticket home to tell him it was over the same weekend that he got down on his knee and said he wanted to be with me forever. I just can't forgive myself sometimes for being so selfish, for trying so hard to find a way to let him go when all he wanted to do was bring us closer together. Looking back, I think he may have known my intentions for coming down that weekend and that his proposal was a way of holding on when he felt like he was losing me. But in the end, I lost him. Again, he made the effort, but this time he died trying. If, uh, if I may say anything. May. I think you need to remember one thing. You know, if, if he didn't love you, if what you had wasn't worth having, then you wouldn't have made the trip. I know. And I'm sure he knew you would have done the same for him. Just this time, unfortunately. And I can only hope that he's in a better place now, wherever that may be. I know he's okay. I just, I just wish that better place was with me. I know. But what hurts even worse is that I can't see him at his grave like I wanted to. Why is that? I was supposed to sneak on a bus driven by a family friend, which, as you can see, obviously didn't work out. You were going to see him tonight? No, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Why tomorrow at 10 a.m.? Because that was when we were going to get married. Well, 
Memorial Day. Yeah. He said he wanted the day to be memorable. It looks like I ruined that. Now I have to try and find a bus headed to D.C. on Memorial Day weekend, which we both know is impossible. Wait, wait, did you just say D.C.? As in Washington, D.C.? Um, yeah, that's the only D.C. I know. <laughs> oh my god! I, I can't believe this! Are you serious? Why wouldn't I be? Didn't you ever take a history class? No! no it's not Penn! I know it's the capital of the U.S. Oh, thank god. Look, <laughs> I I'm asking because I'm actually going to the same place in, in 20 minutes. No way! Yeah, so you don't well, need do you to think that I might have any tickets for tonight? I only you don't need to worry about that. Wait, what did you just say? I said you don't need to worry about that. What do you mean I don't need to worry? I need to get home as soon as I can. You will. With my ticket. Well, then how are you going to get home? I would. You would, and that is more important right now. That's silly. No, what's silly is you deny my offer to be home with your husband. Fiance. No. Your husband. Weird to hear somebody say that. I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to upset you. No, thank you. Thank you for saying it. It means a lot. It means a lot to hear it. Please. Take my ticket and go. Go to see yourself. Are you really serious about this? I would not be. I don't know what to say. Please, don't say anything. Just take your stuff and go. And be careful who you sit next to. The last thing you need is to sit next to some stranger who plays with your hair while you're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, a total stranger isn't always a bad thing, you know? Well, this is true. <laughs> but that whole hair play thing, well, that's a totally different story. <laughs> Well, if you don't hurry up, you're going to find out first hand. Or hands. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Mom, hey. Uh, no, actually, I'm not anymore. Yeah, 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 no, no, everything's fine. I, yeah, I just had time to think about everything that I've said. Hey, uh, Mom, it's Sarah on the other line. Can I call you back later tonight? Yeah, 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 I'll keep you posted. Okay. Okay. I love you. Okay. Bye. Hey, babe. How are you? <laughs> Me? I'm good. The best I've been in a long time. No, I'm not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not! Hey, just before you say anything else, I just, I just want to take this time to tell you something real quick, and I, I don't mean for this to sound too mushy or random when I say this. But are you listening? Okay, good. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> I just, I, I want to take this moment to tell you that I love you and, and um, that I really appreciate you in my life. Sarah, I'm sober. Just listen. <laughs> you, you know, you do so much for us, and this whole distance thing has been driving me crazy lately. So, speaking of driving, I thought I'd let you know that I plan on coming down to Virginia a lot more often. Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, you shouldn't always be the one making me up. <laughs> Great. Oh, uh, wait, you called me, so what's up? Really? You called me for that. Just to tell me that you're on the toilet and you were thinking. <laughs> well, that's kind of shitty. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> I appreciate the thought, no matter where it came. Now, <laughs> right, you finish up there. <laughs> you call me when you get home, okay? <laughs> I'm glad we had a chance to talk to you. It's a safe trip home, okay? All right. Bye, sir. your attention with some words that leave a mark. I stand strong. Together. Together or alone. And continue my quest to find a place to call home. We're the underdogs. We don't bite, we just bark. Trying to catch your attention with some words that leave a mark. We stand strong. Together or alone. And continue my quest to find a place to call home. To call home. To call home. To call home. Shout it out loud. 
out So make your passion your fashion and wear it proud in the crowd Because the talent you're stashing must be shouted out loud